Once again, full disclosure, I didn't buy this Model 577 pulse generator. It was sent to me by the Berkeley Nucleonics Corporation for a review. And in fact, I did a review on that thing. Yeah, card link. However, I might have left out two points. First, I omitted two settings for the gate. And second, I didn't talk at all about rearming the unit. So yeah, and that's what this addendum is about. So let's start with the gate options I omitted. In the previous review, I already talked about the pulse inhibit setting for the gate. And I won't repeat everything I already showed you in the review. Uh, well, either you work with the unit or you will have to watch the review again. And there is a second option here called output inhibit. And there are subtle differences between the two. What I have here on the scope is the gate input from an off-screen function generator to the unit. I have the T0 output from the unit, which I grab at the clock out BNC at the back and the channel A output. The unit is almost completely in default setting. The only thing I did was to yeah, set the width of the channel A output and I set our gate to pulse inhibit. Yeah, we saw that already in the review. And I want you to take a close look to this edge here. If I zoom in a little, you see my gate is going high. And so the next T0 pulse uh, simply doesn't happen. But the gate goes high and my output is still processing and outputting that last T0 pulse. Okay, now let's switch over to the output inhibit. Now with the gate set to output inhibit, the picture changes slightly here. Channel A is no longer finishing its pulse but is inhibited the moment the gate goes high. And well, of course, the T0 pulse is inhibited too. Let's have a look at the system diagrams to explain all that. That's the system overview diagram I used in the initial review video. I just added here the clock input and the gate input to be complete. So we have the T0 internal system timer and mode generator generating a pulse train. We have the channel timers and mode generators A to H modifying that pulse train. We have our output multiplexer and our outputs. And let's have a deeper look into the T0 module. As said before, I won't repeat everything I already said in the review video. Important thing here is we have our gate input, which goes when we choose the option pulse inhibit to yeah, a, a virtual switch here inhibiting the T0 pulse coming out of the T0 unit and therefore inhibiting everything that goes on downstream from here in the channel timers and mode generators. Now we have to add something here for our output inhibit option. If we choose the output inhibit option instead of the pulse inhibit option, the T0 pulse is also inhibited, like in 
using the pulse inhibit option, but our outputs are also directly influenced. So we have to detail our outputs a little bit more. And I've done this in this brand new diagram. So you have your signals from the output multiplexer going into your eight output stages, A to H. And what's new is these switches between the output multiplexer and the output stages. And if we choose output inhibit for the gate, these switches will open as soon as you get a gate signal. The moment you get a gate signal, the outputs are cut off from whatever is going on upstream. And please remember, this is only a function diagram, not an electrical diagram of the unit, okay? Let's now talk about the difference between gate channel pulse inhibit and gate channel output inhibit. And when we will look at the oscilloscope later on, I will just switch between these two options here. Of course, these options work only because they are per channel if you do the right settings on the channels too. And for channel A, I've activated the gating. That's all. In addition, for channel B, I changed the output multiplexer. So the output stage of channel B will now also show the output of the channel A timer and mode generator. Okay, so timer and mode generator A is split to output A and output B. Okay, so from top to bottom, the first three are the same. So our gate signal, our T0 pulses, our channel A output, and of course, in addition now, at the very bottom, our channel B output. And our gate is in channel pulse inhibit mode. And you see, as soon as, yeah, a T0 pulse, comes here to the edge of our gate signal, this will be gone down here. Done. And it's of course done for output stage A and output stage B because both output stages are routed via the multiplexer from the channel A timer and mode generator. Now let's change the mode to channel output inhibit. And we are now in channel output inhibit. And the first thing you notice is that the output stage of channel B is totally unfazed by the gate signal here. Reason being that the signal out of the channel A timer and mode generator, which is routed yeah, to the channel B output stage through the output multiplexer is of course no longer gated. We are just gating the output and what's happened there yeah, on channel A is yeah, almost the same as uh, the output gating see that the output signal, just wait there for a second until we are here again, that the output signal itself is shut off as soon as we are here at the edge of the trigger signal. Now you should be able to see it. Yeah, this should continue like here, but it doesn't. And yes, my uh, <laughs> external gate source is a little bit out of sync right now, but yeah, so we have a nice dynamic picture here. 
back to our diagrams. So the channel pulse inhibit takes place here at the output of the channel timers and mode generators, while the channel output inhibit takes place here at the output of the channel multiplexer. And we had already in the initial review video the channel pulse inhibit option drawn in. So from our gate, if we choose channel pulse inhibit, we can influence these switches here at the output of the channel timer and mode generators. While the channel output inhibit influenced individually the switches between the output multiplexer and the output stages. And yeah, I've added the necessary details to that diagram too. And yeah, that's the reason why output B was completely unfazed by our gate signal here, because I didn't activate that option here for channel B. I just activated it for channel A. So the output of channel A was inhibited by the gate signal, but not the output of channel B. And channel B, you remember, was routed to the output of the channel A timer and mode generator. And these switches here were not engaged because we were no longer in pulse inhibit, but in output inhibit. Now let's talk about rearming and uh, another trigger option that influences the rearming process. I reset the whole unit back to defaults and I set the T0 module to create 10 pulses. And I changed channel A to create a burst of three pulses. The yellow line on my oscilloscope is still showing the T0 pulses and the blue line the output of channel A. And I put my oscilloscope into single shot mode and I'm triggering off the channel A signal. Now if I press run, as expected the unit creates 10 T0 pulses and my channel A counts 1, 2, 3 pulses in a burst. If I want to create that pattern again and my oscilloscope is again in single mode, I have to press again the run stop button because after the 10 pulses of T0 were generated, it went from run mode back to stop. So yeah, run again and there's my pattern. Now I change T0 back to continuous mode and we'll do the same. My oscilloscope is armed for another single shot and I press run stop and yeah, the pattern now is of course a little bit different because yeah, T0 is continuously creating pulses, but I get the three pulses here from the burst on channel A. However, note <laughs> my run stop button is still lit and the unit, the heartbeat is still there. It's still running. You see run stop, green lit, heartbeat is there. And now this rearm button, which I completely skipped in the first part, makes sense. Let's see what happens when I go into a single shot and press that rearm button. So, single shot here again on the oscilloscope. That's the old pattern and I press rearm. Ah, okay. We have the continuous T0 pulses and suddenly 
we have another burst on channel A. So what's happening here? So that rearm soft button obviously influences our channel timer and mode generators. And if we have a look at the detailed graphic I created in the review, um, there was something missing. This rearm button, yeah, going to the mode generators of the channels. And of course, if you are in normal mode, uh, it does nothing, okay? But for single and burst mode, etc., you can rearm the unit, well, not the whole unit, but only these mode generators, while you are in run mode. That also implies when you press the big round run stop button yeah, at the bottom right of the unit, everything is armed, okay? And will go through its program like, uh, yeah, continuous for the T0 mode generator or a single shot or a burst or, well, duty cycle is also kind of continuous. But, yeah, T0 can run an indefinite program like continuous and the channel timers and mode generators are at some point finished with that program. Yeah, I've shown that for a burst. But then you can still rearm them with the rearm soft button and they will run through their program, in our example, the burst again. Now let's talk about the last setting I skipped on that unit. And it's not really about rearming, it's about re-triggering. My channel A is back in normal mode and produces a very wide pulse. And I set the system to single shot. And of course, I have to use the external trigger which I enabled again and connected again so we can have actually a pulse train. And we're talking now about this re-trigger on, re-trigger off option. And we start with mode off and have a look at the oscilloscope. So yellow is still our T0, blue is still our channel A, and in addition we have again our external trigger signal. And yeah, I have an external trigger, I generate a T0 pulse for it, and then channel A makes a very long pulse. And please note that, yeah, the second or every second external trigger pulse is ignored by the T0 unit. And that is because our channel A is still busy creating that pulse. So when re-trigger is off for the external trigger, the unit waits until each and every channel has finished its program whatever that is. And only then the T0 unit will accept another external trigger. I'm changing that now to re-trigger on. And you see now every external trigger pulse results in a T0 pulse. Our channel A is still unfazed by that. It finishes its business and then it watches out again for another T0. But if you have other channels configured to create smaller pulses, those will create those smaller pulses in this now doubled T0 frequency. Uh, let me just off screen 
configure the next channel for that, channel B. Yeah, I rearranged my traces a little bit, shifted everything up and now we have here at the bottom channel B in normal mode. And you see it's generating a pulse with re-trigger on for every T0 pulse and we have a T0 pulse for every external trigger pulse. Well, well channel A is still yeah, doing its business ignoring always that second T0 pulse here. Now I switch re-triggering off again and uh, so we have only for every second trigger pulse a T0 pulse and of course then our channel A generates only yeah a pulse for every T0 pulse or for every second trigger pulse. And it all depends on how long all channels together need to process the last T0 pulse. Yeah, the longest time it needs to process a T0 pulse determines how many external trigger pulses will be ignored by the T0 unit. Okay. I finally covered each and every setting of this model 577 pulse generator from BNC. Yeah, we added some details to our diagrams. We uh, created a new, uh, quite simple diagram for the output inhibit. Uh, beyond the settings, we talked about the rearming mechanisms that thing uses. And at that point, I want to say a big, a really big thank you to the BNC technical support. Uh, they helped me figure out really some of the nuances because <laughs> there was a reason I didn't cover these options in the review itself. Because, yeah, it's all very fitly and timing related, but... Uh, quite useful uh, if you really want to max out what that unit can deliver. So that's it for today. Bye!